You may have heard that Google announced a new ranking factor last year that's due to come into effect this May 2021. It's called Core Web Vitals and it's made up of three measures that indicate a visitor's experience of how quickly pages load. And although this is just one ranking factor in over 200 and only Google really knows the relative importance of it, the public announcement has seen that it's gathered much attention. I didn't think there was going to be the need for a video on this as performance is one of the key reasons why I've been with Beaver Builder for over six years. But while I was trying to learn a little bit more about Core Web Vitals, I kept seeing a fair bit of misinformation, particularly related to what a recent WP Tavern article called the severe performance deficiencies of page builders. Now, Beaver Builder wasn't the subject of this article, but it still is a page builder. And I thought it would be a good time now to refresh ourselves on how Beaver Builder actually works and how performance is more about our design decisions than it is our choice of builder. Here, I want to show how easy it is to pass core web vitals with Beaver Builder pages. And in fact, you could argue that is the default. But of course, this topic goes far beyond Beaver Builder and way beyond my knowledge. So here is just an overview that I hope some will find helpful and practical. Before I come off camera, I should just say that I'm David Wormsey. I build client websites and I try and share what I've learned along the way. If you are a Beaver Builder user, then you might want to consider clicking on the red subscribe button below. Okay, let's dive in. As mentioned, Google's core web vitals are made up of three speed experience measures. I don't know about you, but largely I paid no attention to performance scores in the past. And that was because I felt it wasn't a true representation of a visitor's experience of those pages loading. Well, this very much addresses that. The measures are called largest contentful paint. I'm sure that's a made up word. First input delay and the cumulative layout shift. I don't know how they came up with this terminology but at least they do give us a nice graphic which I think explains it quite well. The first thing to know is that we are measuring mobile here so Google will be simulating the effect of a mobile with a 3G connection as I understand it and the first measurement really is about loading which we are used to but it's done with experience in mind. It's the largest contentful paint is actually what a viewer will see in their viewport. It doesn't have to load the entire page so it is very much about experience and that is set on mobiles to be under 2.5 for us to pass the next one first input delay is about interactivity when we can first interact with our pages and it's set at 100 milliseconds which is really what anybody thinks as instant anything below that is almost imperceivable so it's set there this is going to be difficult to measure because it's all about interaction and we can't easily do it but I do believe that this is probably going to be one of the more important of the three we next have cumulative layout shift which is about visual stability so when you're on a mobile if things are loading you try and click on a button an image appears above it and moves it before you click on that button or you're reading text and things are moving out not a great experience so it's addressing that let's go and take a look at how we might go about optimizing for this so the first one really is about loading so we may be used to this already if we've done some optimization we need to keep our pages as light as possible usually reducing down the sizes of images we need to make sure that we've got good enough hosting that can manage perhaps the load impact of many simultaneous visitors and with WordPress we also have this time to first byte this delay while WordPress queries the database and processes PHP functions etc generally WordPress can do that quite quickly it's quite light but we typically have to add in a load of other plugins perhaps security SEO etc and some are very large and that can slow things down before you can even start to load the page. Mostly we can negate this by adding in a caching plugin. So we served a cache version of HTML instead. There are occasions, of course, where we can't with dynamic sites. So maybe in some membership sites and we can't cache our cart and check out pages with e-commerce. But generally, this is the stuff that we are used to. It gets more difficult with things that are more about interactivity, but the chances are that 
the issues there are going to be with heavy or slow loading JavaScript files and third-party scripts. So we might have to be thinking about when we might want to lazy load these or whether we've got too many of those and just ways of being able to deliver those much more quickly and get rid of what we don't need. The next one is probably a lot easier, the cumulative layout shift, the moving around of images on the mobile so you can't read stuff instantly. A lot of that is going to be down to images, embeds and iframes that don't have a dimension set so it's kind of finding its place afterwards. If you set it, the browser knows what to do. Interstentials, we get those immediate pop-ups, they're not going to be good. Animations and fonts as well. Often with Google fonts, heavier Google fonts, might get a flash of invisible text, flash of unstyled text. Anything really that is waiting for a network response before updating the DOM. I typically see it with fonts with the most beautiful sites, often feminine sites where they're using cursive fonts or a number of them which are quite heavy. And what I will typically get as my default cursive font will be Comic Sans. It does. It is rather amusing when I see a flash of that before the site becomes beautiful. Okay, let's move on to my next section, which is talking about the performance measuring tools that we use. So it's probably familiar screen there. This is Google Page Speed Insights. Something to note about this first is that things did change maybe a couple of years now. This is really a cut down version of Lighthouse, which is an open source automated tool for improving the quality of web pages. Yes, I took that from their site. And this is now appearing in other places. And it's a great tool that does more than performance. But here, it's just the hosted version of this. And something to note straight away is that if this is still the correct number of server locations, you can see that some people are going to benefit, particularly if you're in North America, than say someone in South Africa or Australia, because the server locations are going to be closer to you. So it's going to be easier to achieve the better results here. In terms of core web vitals, two of those are pretty easy to spot because they're the same name. The other one, which is about interactivity, is not so easy. So we have to use this as a proxy. You might think this is the one to go for, interactive, because it's talking about that. But this is time to the page being fully interactive. And as this is about the experience, about first interaction, it doesn't want to measure this because this will take longer. So I think what we get with this is really, I think, the difference between this and this, or it might be this and this. I'm not entirely sure, but it is really just a proxy for the moment. We can only really tell when Google lets us know and you can't see anything here, but if I go over to this speed test here on the BBC, you can see it's letting them know that they haven't passed here. Same with Amazon, same with YouTube as well, also owned by Google. So you're in good company if you're not passing. Um, let's just take a look. As we mentioned Lighthouse, it's there also available in our Chrome inspector. So I'm just going to bring that up now and we can see what other things come with Lighthouse. We've, we can measure SEO, accessibility, best practice and progressive web app. And we can set this to mobile or desktop for our performance. I'm just going to run this on performance and it's going to try and simulate the speed of a mobile but it's, it's going to depend a lot on what's going on at my end of things so I mean, it's probably about right there so let's just move on perhaps if you're not close to these you might want to use this more also using lighthouses gt metrics i think that only happened about a month or two ago it's not one that i've typically used here we are and i'm testing my beaver junction site now this happens to be hosted i think around california something like that is where the server is this is by default in vancouver Vancouver in Canada, so not too far away, so it gets a fairly good performance here. Here are the web vitals, but I think it's only giving you the web vitals as it reads it for desktop and not mobile, so it's it's kind of more positive on this one. But you can end up with a terrible score. I tend not to go here because I can't be bothered to log in to find another server location, one to the UK. So I don't I don't bother with this. If I was to do one of my UK sites here, it would probably be coming out as a D because of the latency effect here. But this is a very good tool. It's got lots of stuff, the waterfall, lots of stuff. There's a pro version where you can have lots of different servers as well. Typically, I will use this tools.pingdom.com to do my testing. Here's the same site. You can select different areas over here and you can see the performance grade. It's just its own. It's not using Lighthouse, but it's much lower on this one. And they're 
pace side is not very big on this one load times pretty good for the local area where i'm testing requests are fine sometimes with the uk it's very easy for me to get these around 200 milliseconds on a lot of my beaver builder sites it's very rare for the need to go over one second but i think pingdom's pretty kind one that isn't so kind to me but is one of my all-time favorites is web page test which gives you waterfalls and it also gives you a video there's too much to cover here but the video i like and i've just pointed this out because you you don't see it by default when you go to the page there you need to look for the advanced settings and stick on the capture video and it's very good and what's nice about this you can simulate the different types of connections that you might have different areas different browsers as well so there's a lot of testing that you can do i think a combination of any of these are fine you just need to know what they're really doing then they do behave differently you need to consider latency you need to know really that lighthouse is developing all the time and it occasionally has some bugs which throw things out you might have differences with servers you also need to understand that the 100 score isn't equally measured the distance between 80 and 100 is really minor compared to say 20 to 80 there really is no universal score with these they are just tools to help us achieve a goal they should not be the goal itself if a client was asking for you to achieve a certain measure here it would be the wrong way of going about it let me move on to what might be the best way for that and first I just want to show you this site so here is my results for this site that I built here now there are a lot of things I'd like to change about this site because a lot was going into the marketing and copying and stuff and we had images came in late so there was a lot of bad practice in the way that I set things up so I'm not surprised I've got a kind of poor response here I, in fact if I click on here I can show you the page it's a wonderful product by the way teardrop caravan um, really really funky but it's got some animation there. Um, I put this Ken Burns effect in. I wouldn't normally do that because it's high on CP usage and, and I don't really like that. And it also meant that I needed to put in a separate header, so doubling up the code for mobiles. Um, there's, there's still lots of stuff for project management in the back end, although that's probably masked uh, with um, WP Rocket that we are using for the cache-in. But there are some other things which I don't always use. There's a, a lot of power pack in there. So even though it's a simple site, there's a lot going on. It's not put together in the best way possible. It was rushed as I changed a lot of colors in the last moment. And you would say, okay, so I really do need to improve things. But if you have a look at it here, we're passing two of these. It's only really on the loading that we have an issue if we want to pass core web vitals. I could spend a lot of time trying to do this. And in fact, if I test this site on most of the other testers here, it will show me that I need to do quite a lot of improvements. But, and I think this is really key, if I go to Google Search Console, and the client did say it was okay to show this, um, there's really only eight pages here. In its history, it's always passed Core Web Vitals. This is what Google's judging. As far as they're concerned, it's passing on speed. It's just to bear that in mind. And if clients want any guarantees, that's really where they need to be looking. In fact, not many of my sites have actually been picked up on this, but there's one I looked at, which has got just over 100 pages and probably about 20 of those are not passing. I'm hoping they are the ones that the clients added, which set it up so they can add their products. And there may be just two large images, but it could be down to me. And then it's something I can kind of work on knowing that it's worth doing the work where all of these are just great for building but wouldn't want to set these as a measure as a goal itself that's really what I'm saying okay let's move on to beaver builder which is probably why you were here in the first place so I I did a little test and there's a reason behind this it might look a bit odd if you're in the beaver builder Facebook group because I posted something it looked like it was some kind of brag I created this site silly site with SVGs and a couple of images on there and it's just some basic styling on there. The reason that I did this is because I was in a group that was focusing on speed and I saw someone do a similar page, it was SVGs, a few images and just text and it was similar. And that was fine, they got 100%. Once they removed their animation, they got their 100 that they wanted. Uh, very proud of it. But the conversations that went on was very much about the tools that were used. And as I was looking at it, I was thinking, surely you've got a problem with your tools if you can't deliver that with what was on that site so basically that's what i set up and i wanted to show in the group uh, not that my skills or anything or not to say that beaver builder is wonderful just to say 
that there's nothing Beaver Builder doesn't get in the way of you creating a site that's simple that is likely to score 100, which it did. It did follow on. Someone did follow it up with the saying they were leaving Beaver Builder because of performance and they were moving on to another builder that was using Gutenberg to generate pages. What they showed as their evidence was that was an example Beaver Builder page and how it scored against their own site that they built with this Gutenberg editor, which I won't mention its name. So I couldn't help but want to recreate that so I did using exactly their own resources on that so let me just go over to this I've now replaced it so it doesn't identify and doesn't clash but it's basically it was a simple site like this and I did it and the results were either the same or better it's to my surprise that actually as it was Gutenberg what happened because we get more divs with Beaver Builder it was almost double the size on the source code, but actually when it came around to the rest of the code, and I allowed for the fact that they had other things that were would impact on it, like they had Google Analytics on it, because the builder that they had, even though it was using Gutenberg, it had generated a lot more CSS on its own. So it cut off about a third by recreating the same design on Beaver Builder. So they're really leaving Beaver Builder to go on another platform where they could have actually had the better results on Beaver Builder. So I think it's really key to keep in mind what you're actually working with compare like with like so that's why I created this one as well let me just go back to here and okay let me talk about the pros and cons so I knew these right from the beginning when I moved to Beaver Builder I used to use Genesis in my earlier days all the allure of those mega themes were out there that did absolutely everything were adding new stuff all the time loved them really difficult to work with speed issues later down the line stability those kind of issues and then i moved to something like genesis simple thing had to do much more work myself but nice and clean when i wanted to move really because i knew this was the demand from clients to have more control over their pages to a page builder i really wanted it to be clean so i checked this out so the thing is and it's still the case is that beaver builder will only load what it needs to load so it really is down to us. So if we don't want JavaScript as we've got on my first, you don't have any. If you don't add anything that adds JavaScript, it's not gonna add it for you. I know there are other systems out there that will do that. They will fill up your page regardless with CSS, maybe up to a megabyte or more, or JavaScript as well. Beaver Builder only loads what it needs for that particular page. Also, the backend resources that it uses, what it demands on your server is less. This is almost impossible for me to measure but it's around adding about four to eight megabytes or something that may be an extra megabyte you could add to that for beaver thema or the beaver builder theme really hard to measure that in fact if i just go over here this is where i've got logged in this is the same site and it's showing me that it's only just over nine megabytes with the beaver builder theme and also the page builder i don't think theme is in on this um uh, WordPress generally would be generated about six of those so it's kind of on the lighter side than this but I mean if I refresh this this it could easily go up to 30 at any point but I do try and check out the relative difference when things have stabilized to see how things are changing there it's always remained lightweight it still is so it's not taking up much in terms of back-end resources which might have an impact on your time to first bite and your largest contentful paint if you were caching things. So that's not really one of the things I worry about. Interestingly enough though, I do feel that if you're using a page builder that's largely built around JavaScript, that would include Gutenberg. Because it's running that, it doesn't seem to use up the RAM in the same way. But I do think from my measurements and what other people have said, that then there's another trade-off against CPU usage. Um, so that's probably the trade-off there. Also, since version 2.3, things are modular, you can disable any of the modules and that has a knock-on effect to all of the add-on packs, the popular ones there. Also, it's the history of Beaver Builder. They built this not because they were out to make a profit because they already, well, they were, of course, they needed to, but they built it for their own need, for their own agency. That's what they did first. They're not one of these theme houses who need to find some way to generate some new interest as people did move into page builders. They did it for good reasons. They've stuck true to people in a similar situation who don't want a heavy page builder where everything gets added on for everything everyone because that only leads to one kind of direction there's going to be problems down the line so they've always really gone against the popular demand for things that are the trend at that time and held out for those even though i'm sure that's cost them in profit they've been true to their core fans who are largely the kind of developers or agencies but of course it's a tool that can be used by beginners as long as they work within the general restrictions of it 
Okay, the cons. Well, obvious. It's not going to be as light as WordPress only. That's what you get with Gutenberg. You do have to add in another plugin. I've already covered that. The thing is, it's not an option for me, Gutenberg, as it is at the moment. I need something that's stable for clients. It changes all of the time. But it doesn't do the things that I need. I can't do the conditional custom fields that I might be able to do with Beaver Thema. And something like that is not even on the horizon. So to look at Gutenberg for me as the future, they need to declare <laughs> it actually is in their vision before. I can even consider it. So it's out for me, but I mean, it might be a very good choice. I mean, I've got nothing against it. If you can work with that, obviously it's going to be slightly lighter, but it is really quite small on that. Most of the time, you're going to need to rely on a third party, which is working with Gutenberg to fill in the gaps, but they may be only temporary because I'm sure it's the aim of Gutenberg to make sure that it's got a fully fledged page builder for wordpress.com. How long will these temporary solutions be around? So that's my kind of thinking on that. Divitus or Deception or whatever you want to call it. So this, <laughs> this was led a little bit by one particular page builder that I like. I won't mention their names here, but I'm sure most people know. And it's this problem. Well, it's not really a problem at all to me that you get more divs all the time. Now, these extra divs are there so you can add in styling from the page builder that's the reason why they are there but you know it's not the neatest of code i knew this right from the beginning in truth this really isn't a speed issue i don't know how many extra divs you would need to do before it could even impact on speed because the ability to process basically text like this is you know it's not even worth considering as an issue but even so if that is a problem for you you don't have to go with everything that is in the page builder as it is if you want to reduce that so let's say you're using the heading module you could just decide if you're styling that with your theme that you just put it in your text with the rest of your text and just call it a heading then you lose a whole bunch of divs and there are other things that you can do to reduce that I think the main con really is just with page builders anyway lazy I've become lazy as to set things up and think them now often I will design a row and then I'll duplicate it and I'll be duplicating the CSS all the time. Again, something that mostly browsers will be able to process so it won't be such a big issue, but it does make me a little bit sloppy. And I think for those non-coders who are now able to build their pages, it doesn't really page builders don't bring them any closer to learning good practice and typically you look to plugins to solve every issue so you keep adding lots of these plugins that do more than you are going to use them for it builds up to that way you get problems with your uh, largest contentful paint and you probably have issues as uh, well with your extra javascript that often gets added still typically globally so that's really all i wanted to say final words i don't know if i'll get through all of this the aim of this video was just to try and put some context as best I can for Beaver Builder and this it's not my intention to claim that Beaver Builder is extremely fast it really is what we make it I've seen so many tests being done on page builders and themes that really I guess it's more about selling stuff than anything but it really is more about good practice the very misleading I think on these lot of these tests but buying the fastest tools it really is about how you use them uh, and that's it so I wanted to counter some of the things that I'd heard about older page builders like Beaver Builder being mentioned where they won't be able to do this well really they can because it's entirely in your hands but I think you know web core vitals is the thing at the moment a bit like GDPR before it's a little bit if you're a reckless driver and you see a car crash tomorrow you might drive a bit slower a week later you'll forget about it I think that's going to be the same with core web vitals the people will behave the way that they they want it's just a case of remembering that Beaver Builder is a tool. It can save us a lot of time. We make certain compromises like I, I do with the divs. But again, you know, when you're in WordPress, it's, it's compromised from the beginning. If you're building static sites, the most performant way to do that would not be to start with installing a platform that is made up of around 500,000 lines of codes and a database. And then probably that again in themes, page builders, backup. SEO, security plugins, etc. So that's really it. And I think some people who commented on my post before were saying about complex situations with e-commerce, learning management systems and memberships. And I can't really cover that with Beaver Builder. Most of those pages may not even have Beaver Builder on it and they won't really get in the way. It's really down to that. So it's something I can't cover. But I would like to later sort of follow up with some more practical tips where I might sort of kind of touch on those elements on it. 
But again, right from the beginning, I was saying this is only one in over 200 of the ranking factors that is with Google. Only they know how important it is. And as mentioned, we have big sites like Amazon, YouTube, and the BBC are failing. Anyway, thank you so much for your time today. I hope this was useful. If it was, please give me a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks. Bye-bye.